Bible church this morning. Are we happy we are in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Are we happy we are in the house of the Lord, church? Yeah. Come on, let's see your Bibles this morning. Let's see your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, you can use your tablets, phones, as long as you don't go on Facebook as I preach. That's fine. Uh, let's see your Bibles. Let's see your Bibles. And let's turn our Bibles in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm very excited because we are starting a new series this morning called Battle Cry. Say Battle Cry. Turn the person next to you say Battle Cry. And in this series, what we're going to talk about is the battles that are raging between us. Or not be just between us, but within us. You know, everywhere you look nowadays, if you watch the news, if you watch, you know, the internet, everywhere you look, it seems like everyone is fighting for something. Can I hear that, man? There's always some kind of cause that everyone is fighting for, some kind of right that everyone's fighting for. There's always people. And it's sad and sometimes it's overwhelming to see what is happening around us today. That there's so much fighting, there's so much battling. This morning, church, I want to remind us as believers of Christ, the Bible tells us that we ourselves are also in a fight. Third person next to remind the person, we are in a fight. But you know what the big difference with our fight is? The Bible says that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. What do we mean we are not fighting against flesh and blood? That means we are not fighting against physical features. We are not fighting actually against people or against each other. I realized as I studied with this sermon, I realized that the greatest, one of the greatest lies of the enemy is that he wants us to always turn to each other and fight each other. He wants us to turn to each other and hate each other. He wants us to turn to each other and realize that the enemy is us within ourselves. But the Bible gives us clarity. The Bible gives us wisdom on what the battle is really is about. And the Bible tells us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But most of the time, when when we're attacked and when we're offended, of course, by someone, we turn our attention to the person itself. And that's when we start having grudges, that's when we start having that feeling of bitterness, that's when we start having that feeling of unforgiveness with someone that's caused us pain. Why? Because understandably, because we've been hurt. But one thing I want to encourage all of us this morning, church, is that we have to realize that all the conflicts, all the problems and all the drama. Say drama. drama. Turn the person next to you say drama. drama. Say you're full of drama. <laughs> Don't be offended, okay? That's okay. Turn the person again. Okay. Tell the person you're full of drama. Full of drama. And, here's one, and there's one thing that I want to remind us this morning. All of us are. We have to admit that. We are people that is full of what? Drama. We, we have a lot of wants a lot of needs. We have a lot of desires. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The Bible tells us, do you know what's causing all these fights and quarrels among you? The Bible tells us that the battle that we are fighting is really the battle within ourselves. And sometimes we have this mentality of, oh, you know what, I just want to live, I just want to live in peace with everybody else. I don't want to be bothered. You know, I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to be offended. I just want to mind my own business. The Bible says, if you are living for Christ, you, are, you will be persecuted. If you are living for Christ, you will experience conflict. And what did I always believe and what did I realize now? Is conflict is not something you can avoid. It's something that you are supposed to manage. You cannot avoid conflict. You cannot avoid sometimes things that you would not agree with each other because God created us with such diversity. Can you hear that, amen? All of us are different. All of us have different wants, different needs. And today we're also going to talk about different expectations. And the Bible says that's exactly what is causing all this drama. Say drama. drama. And so the message I titled this morning is part one of our series Battle Cry is what is your battle cry? What is a battle cry? You know, battle cry is, is what they say before they go into fight. Sometimes they say honor, 
no mercy. Right? That's just that's the battle cry. When they when they're about to, to come into battle, they have a battle cry. And they, they say, you know, for honor, for loyalty, or whatever they, they, they will cry out before the battle. And here's one thing I want to encourage all of us this morning, and I want all of us to think about what is your battle cry? Understanding that we are all in a spiritual battle. Sometimes our battle cry is this, I quit. If something's uncomfortable, something that I don't like, I quit. That's my battle cry. You know, every time I come to battle, if I don't like it, I quit. Or sometimes our battle cry is an eye for an eye, two for two. No mercy. Okay? You know, I'm gonna fight till the end, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go after people. But I hope that this message this morning will really challenge us to understand that what, we, uh, what fight we're in is a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. If you are a born again believer of Jesus Christ, you have to understand that everything, say everything, everything, everything that happens to you has a spiritual root. It cannot just be physical. It cannot just be, oh, I don't like this person. Or, I don't like my boss. Or, I don't like this. Or this person is rude against me. This person is this. And we focus too much on each other. You have to see it in a bigger picture. Someone that just don't like you for no reason. Someone that won't hurt you for no reason. Can you hear that? Man? You know, I don't understand why this person never liked me. There's a spiritual battle within that. Can you hear that in church? Amen. There are people that you're going to say, oh, I, don't, I don't understand this person, I don't understand that person because I don't know why he didn't like me or I, I don't know why I don't like them. It's not just physical, guys. It's never just the physical. We have to understand, we have to be smart. The Bible tells us, going to tell us this morning that we have to be smart. We have to see it in a spiritual realm. And we have to ask ourselves, what is causing this? What is causing this drama in my life. And one thing that we are good at doing is point fingers and blame others. Can you hear me, man? I'm in the situation I'm in right now because of that person. I'm in the situation I'm in right now because that person did this to me. That might be right. Can you hear me, man? That might be very right. But what about what God is telling you? Because God says, one of the man of God says this, love your what? Your enemies. As you love your son. Can you hear me, man? Let's all bow our heads and pray together. Father God, challenge us with your word this morning. As we start this series, Lord God, may we see clearly, Lord God, that we are in a great battle. And this battle is not fought with weapons that are man-made, that this battle can only be fought in our knees, when we seek you, when we surrender our will to you, when we surrender our heart to you, when we call out to you, when we cry out to you, and when our battle cry becomes, God, I want you to take this from me. God, I want you to help me through this. God, I want you to change my heart. Lord, may you challenge us this morning. As we pray, we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's turn your Bibles in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read from verse 10 to 12. And look what it says here. <coughs> verse 10. And this is one of my favorite part of the scripture, especially in the book of Ephesians. Because, and this is what we're going to talk more about this in this series. In this series, I want all of us to realize and ask ourselves, am I fighting the right battle? Am I in the right battle? Because for us as believers, it's not a question of fighting. Everyone has a fighting spirit. Can you hear me, man? Yeah. Especially when you're put on the side and when you, when you have to defend yourself, you have no choice but to fight. That's our instinct. So the question is not whether anymore are you fighting or are you fighting hard. The question now is, do you understand the battle that you're in? Or are you in the right battle? Because some of us are fighting the wrong battles with wrong ways of fighting it and with wrong weapons. 
That's why we get tired. That's why we get overwhelmed. That's why we get burned out. Because without God, God, I'm so tired of battling all this. I'm so tired of fighting for this. And God is saying, because you're fighting it the wrong way. You're fighting it with the wrong weapon. One thing that we have to understand this morning, church, is we have to understand what kind of battle we should be in. And that battle is not against each other. Look what it says in the Bible. Verse 10 to 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Look what it says here. A final word. Let's read this together. Ready, set, go. Be strong in the Lord and in His That is passive. That means allow the Spirit to work in your heart so you can be what? Be strong in the Lord. Now the question for us this morning is, I know, but how can I be strong in the Lord? Because how many of you ever feel sometimes that you are just weak? Can you hear me, that you just feel like, man, Pastor, I'm just, I feel like the devil just won't leave me alone this week. <laughs> Have you ever had a week like that? Nice. I've had weeks where I just want to crawl up in bed and just, you know, turn on the blinds and just don't want to do anything. And all these thoughts, these negative thoughts just keep coming up to your head, telling you you're no good, you're not fulfilling your purpose, you're this, you're that. And sometimes we have that urge to give in. To those negative thoughts. Can I hear an amen? amen? How many of you can relate to that? Amen. There are times that we feel defeated sometimes. And so when we read this scripture, we ask ourselves, okay, God, you want us to be strong. How do I do that? Well, the Bible tells us, look what it says here. Here's how you to be strong in the Lord. Verse 11. You have to put what? Put on the what? The full armor of God. You have to put on all of what? God's armor so that you will be able to what? Stand. To stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Church, in this series, we got to go through this, the, the, the full armor of God. This is so amazing because the Apostle Paul write this and use this illustration of a soldier, a Roman soldier. And in a Roman soldier, they have different parts of their uniform and different parts of their weapon that they carry with them. They have a shield, they have a sword, they have a belt, they have sandals. Just like today. You know, our armies today, when they go into battle, they have different other things that they use that will help them fight the what? The battle. Here's one thing I want to understand, church, this morning. God has given us weapons. God has given us weapons to be victorious in the fight. Why is it sometimes that we feel defeated? Because we are not putting it on. Can I hear an amen? amen? It's just like coming to the battle and you're like, Oh, I, man, I forgot my gun. What do you expect would happen to you if you come to the battle and you forgot your gun? Or not even God, if you forgot your weapon? gonna lose and that's why many times as believers of Christ we feel defeated because we forget that God has already given us a what an armor he says there put on pastor Ray's armor is that what it says there what does it say there? put on whose armor it's God's armor it's not my armor you don't want my armor because I'm a real I'm, <laughs> Uh, I'm not good with fighting, okay? I'm not good with fights. Uh, I'm really chicken. <laughs> you know? I grew up in the neighborhood where there's always fights, but I, I never outgrow it because I'm always scared of fighting. How many of you scared of fighting? See, the mother when I'm bitter. I can't do it. I'm scared of fighting. I don't want to fight. But now I understand that the fight in my life has nothing to do with physical fighting. It has everything to do with what? It's spiritual warfare. We have an enemy that is after us every single day. And while we are sleeping out on reading our scriptures, while we're sleeping out on not attending church, and while we're sleeping out on not doing our devotional time, while we're sleeping out on not praying to God, the devil is working over time. Why do you think it's so hard to find time? 
as if it's running away from us. Can you hear me, man? Why is it always hard to find time? No, it's not hard to find time. We always have time to the things that we think are important. Can you hear me, man? Where your treasure is, your heart will be also what you prioritize in your life. That is where your time will go. Can you hear me, man? What you think is important, will you prioritize it? But sometimes we don't think that our spiritual life is that important. That's why we neglect on our spiritual life. And that is where the devil exactly wants us to be. Can you hear me, man? When we are weak, when we are lacking wisdom, when we don't have discernment, imagine, I, I, imagine a whole week without eating the right food. And not just eating, because I know I've had weeks that I've eaten food, but I still feel sluggish. Why? There's too much MSG. Makes <laughs> you sleepy. It's not just about eating, it's about Nutrition that you allow your body to have. Can you hear that? Yeah. Same thing with our spiritual life. That's why the Bible says, put on God's armor so you can what? Stand firm against the what? And yes, people, the devil has strategy. And this one thing I realized with, with, with how the devil works. The devil doesn't tempt you and tell you what to do. Oh, the devil doesn't tempt you. Let me correct myself. The devil doesn't tempt you and give you options. Just like what you see on those commercials, those milk commercials, where there's like a devil on this side and an angel on this side. It's never worked that way. If you've really been tempted and you understand how the enemy works, the devil does not give you an option. The devil does not come to you and say, oh, here's what I want you to do, but also this is what the right thing to do. No, the devil will speak to you what he exactly wanted to do for us. Can you hear me, man? Yeah. This is what you're going to do. you always done this. you always get away with this. See that? This is what you're going to do. And you're listening to it. And, it, and his, he, he strategizes it in a way that is going to get you when you are the most weakest. He strategizes you in a way when he gets you when you are the most busiest. He gets you in a way to strategize you when you are the most not thinking about God. And why do you think the Bible tells us that we have to meditate on God's word? What? Day and night. Why? Because that's part of God's plan. Can I hear you, man? Look what, what the Bible says. So you can stand firm against all what? Strategies. All strategic plan. Can I hear you, man? The last full of the eyes, the appetite, the same thing that he uses with Adam and Eve, the same thing that he's using with us now. There's nothing new to it. It's something that, 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 that is appealing to our eyes, something that is appealing to our appetite, something that, is, that will gain knowledge, that is something that will always the devil wants us to use. How can we stand it if we are not standing firm, we're not putting on the armor of God? Look what it says in verse 12. And this is what I love, verse 4. Let's read this together. Are you with me? Yeah. Turn the person next to you and say, let's read this together. Yeah. Say, don't sleep. Don't sleep. <laughs> You're going to lose the battle if you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> don't sleep. Okay? We are the army of God. Okay? Yeah. Let's say this together. We are the army of God. Yeah. Army of God. That's going to be a battle cry this morning. One, one more time. One, two, three, go. We are the army of we don't sleep through Pastor Ray's message. Because you sleep, you snooze, you forget, and you come to me and you cry, and you have all these problems, and I'm just going to repeat to you, well, that's what I preached about last Sunday. <laughs> but listen up to this church. Look at what the Bible is saying. Let's read this together. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Here's one thing I want you to do this morning. Here's one thing I want to do. Turn to the person next to you or wherever you want to turn to and tell that person, you're not my enemy. <laughs> Are you sure? Some of the, I, I hear some people say, Are you sure? 
If you're sitting right next to your husband or your wife, this is the best time to do that. Tell that person, I know we fight a lot, but hon, you're not my enemy. See, look what the Bible says, you're not my enemy. That is true, guys. Even in the church, we, we wear the same what? Uniform. But the devil is so good that he can sometimes deceive us, turn to each other and say, Oh no, that's my enemy because I don't like that. Or I don't like him, I don't like her. That's how good he is. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. That's why we can never say, Oh, I'll take him by myself. No, you can't. We need each other. Yeah. We need the whole army to come together. Because the enemy will continually attacking and attacking and attacking. We can win one battle, but we can never always win the war. The only way that we can win the war is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's only through Him, church. If we depend on the love and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we totally depend on Him, we realize that God... It is you that will fight my battles for me. Because I, I, I've done it myself, i tried it myself, but I realize I end up just pushing away people that you stand here to help me. That I realize that it's not the people that I should be fighting with. And if we just realize that, there's so, so much clarity that will, that's going to happen in our world today. Can I hear you, amen? Why? Because the Bible tells us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Who are we fighting for? Here's who are really fighting for church. Let's read it together. Ready, set, go. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. You cannot see it. It's not physical. Why? Against what? Mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the what? In the heavenly realm of what we are fighting for, church, is a spiritual battle. It's not a question. It's not a question. Excuse me. It's not a question of a system or even politics. It's a question of sin. Because the Bible says that all of us have fallen short of God's glory and all of us are sinful. It's not a government problem. It's not a nation problem. It's a heart problem. I'm broken. You're broken. I have a lot of issues to deal with. You have a lot of issues to deal with. The overflow of it is what we experience with each other. There are times that we clash. There are times that we don't see eye to eye. There are times that we, we hate each other. All of that is because of our condition of our heart. Can you hear me, man? People are not just grumpy all the time. Are you with me? People are just always grumpy all the time. Oh, that person is Mr. Grumpy, you know. You don't know the condition of the heart. We don't know the condition of the heart. And that is what is happening today. Because God, the devil is strategizing it and saying, turn to that person, turn to that person. That is your enemy. When God says, no, love your enemies. No wonder God says, love your enemies. Because the enemy that he wants us to love are not really our enemies. Can you hear the amen? God says love their enemies. That means love that flesh and blood right there. Because the, in reality, that's not really your enemy. In reality, there's one thing I realized. With about six years that I'm in the ministry. One thing that I realized. We have a lot more in common than we have differences. We just need to get to know each other. Can you hear the amen? The people that you don't agree with, the people that you don't normally don't like, the people that you get clashed with, sometimes are the people that you have known nothing about. And we can just become judgmental and become conclusive and say, oh no, no, no I'm never going to hang out with that person. Why? Because that is a spiritual battle, church. Can I hear an amen? 
Number one in your notes this morning. I want you to take out your bulletin this morning. This is some good, good, good word that God has given us this morning. Look at what number one in your notes this morning. Number one in your notes. Look what it says there. Remember, always remember who the what? In marriages, husband and wife. There are times that God has to rebuke me. But there are times that I feel irritated at home. There are times that I don't know. I forget sometimes that I'm a pastor. <laughs> and my wife is the only one that sees it. And sometimes there are times that God has to rebuke me and say, come here. <laughs> okay, God. Come here. Look at that person with you. You know that is my greatest gift to you. That's not your enemy. Your enemy is what's in your heart. You're full of rage, you're full of anger, you're full of drama, you're full of issues in your heart. It has nothing to do with people around you. It has nothing to do with well, well, God. Did you see what, what, what that person did? Yeah, I saw it. What you gonna do about it? You can never control how people will treat you, but you can control how you treat them back. Can I hear an amen? Do you know that we all have the power to choose to hate a person and at the same time we have the same exact power to love them? Are you with me? The same power that you have to hate someone is the same power that God has given you to decide to love someone. Oh, I didn't have a choice, Pastor. You know, I just had to hate that person. No, you have a choice. You can respond by loving someone or you can respond by hating someone. Why? Because again, remember who the what? The real enemy is. So when you get into fight, husband, when you get into fight, you start thinking, huh, maybe it's time for us to start praying together. Can I hear you, man? You know what? I, one that I love my wife do to me because since I'm a pastor, she sends me devotionals. She takes me devotionals. And she will tell me, yeah, you know, let's read this devotional. And we will have date nights. And when, on our date nights, on the way driving, I will tell her, hand, read the devotional. And we'll talk about it. Why? Because the devil is smart. The Bible tells us that we have to be also smarter. Can you hear me, man? If we, the devil, trying to confuse us on who the real enemy is, then we have to be smart and understanding. We have to remember who the real enemy is, church. It's not your loved ones. It's not, it's not your boss. It's not even that friend of yours or whatever it is. The real enemy that we know that now that we are living as born again believers of Christ, that we know that we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We know that we are fighting against principalities, rulers of the air. In other words, demons and Satan. All of that is just being used. Now I want also us to be careful because there are many times that we just put it on all on the devil. And I feel bad for the devil sometimes. Right? Because sometimes everything that we do wrong, we put it on and oh, it's the devil that made me do it. You know, I think if the devil can get a lawyer, he'd probably sue us. For all the things that he probably didn't do, and we keep telling that, oh, it's the devil that, that did it. No, not every, I can't, we have a choice, church. Do you hear me? But we have to understand that the problem that's raging within us is a spiritual problem. It's not a physical problem. It's not just about, you know, what we see with each other. There's something that is rooted within that that has spiritual effect in it. Can you hear the amen? People that are going through something sometimes are people that most likely will hurt someone, someone or something. Why? Because love is what will conquer it all. Can you hear the amen? That's why that is the antidote that God has given us. Love your enemies. Love them. Why? Because the devil will do exactly the same. Hate. That's how Mahal will teach us. Write this down. I want you to write this down. Look what it says here. 
when the devil start telling you to get mad and to go after the person when the devil start telling you to get mad and go after the person 100% of the time God is telling you to pray about the situation I've learned this I've learned this I've become a little bit smart when it comes to with me and my wife in the heat of your emotion, you tend to do things that you don't really mean. You hear me, man? Right. You tend to say things that is just because out of your emotion, your anger, it comes out. So, and there's no way of really holding that back because that is your emotion. Can I hear me, man? So God giving us wisdom and saying, you have to be able to handle that. And one thing that I love, and I'm really going to brag about my wife because, man, Without my wife. Oh man, your pastor? I'll probably be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is really man, I don't deserve my wife. I can live a hundred lifetime. I don't I, I can never deserve my wife. He's it's the greatest gift that God's given me. And God and she has taught me to handle my emotions. So there are times that I know that I'm getting angry. She just leave me alone. And she will pray. And she will listen to worship song really loud. <laughs> and fill the room with worship. <laughs> kind of like taunting me. Let's see how you get mad now. Huh? Let's see. Let's see. And I know the spirit will just work. And you just allow the spirit to work. And you allow the spirit to convict you. And tell you and remind you. Calm down. That's not your enemy. Calm down, that's not your enemy. Look at her. Pray this good. Not enemy. Look at her. Actually, look around you. Look around you. Look around you. I know you don't want to see the person in the <laughs> But look around you. We're all wearing different clothes this morning. But you know what I see this morning? Same uniform. Same uniform. Your past, I'm not your enemy. Okay? If I preach something that you don't like, that's just because that's what the Bible says. But I'm not your enemy. And what did I know? If you sin, you're not my enemy. We're the same thing. We just need to be reminded that we have a real enemy. Can you know Let's give back to our God this morning. When you come to work this uh, tomorrow morning, Monday, I want you to realize that. I want you to remind yourself, God, make, make, let this be your prayer when you come to work this morning, on Monday. God, show me, remind me who my real enemy is. It's not that. It's not my boss. I know he's grumpy all the time, but no, I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid for him. Maybe some of you are going through some marital problems right now. Let me remind you right now. You're not, you're not enemies. You're not. That's not your enemy. You have to be smart. You have to say, God, show me the bigger picture. God, show me where is this thing coming from. Because the devil wants you, wants you to be destroyed. Can you hear amen? First Peter says, the enemy is like a what? A roaring what? Bug? No. No, it's not those little bugs that's... Hello! No, it's not like that. Peter describing him as a what? A roaring lion. And he, he used the word that's just waiting for someone to devour. Not just destroy. Not just hit. Not just attack. Devour. Meaning he will not stop until you're down to the ground and nothing left with nothing. That's our real enemy in church. And the only way to fight that battle is to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can you hear me, amen? Let's give it up to our God. I'm going to say that I've spoken to many people and relationship problems and all this and most of the time, oh no, you know, because it's, it's my in-law, it's my wife or this and that. I love my in-laws. <laughs> That's, that's my problem, that's my problem, and say, 
The only thing that has come to my mind all the time is this. How should your relationship with Jesus be? If you're trying to overcome those relational problems, and if you're trying to change someone else, good luck. <laughs> I tried it. You have no power to change someone. But Pastor, I just want her to change. No. Tell God, change this inside. Once God, once you allow God to change this inside, you see clearly. Now you see, you know what? I'm good. I know that God has something better than that. Can I hear an amen? amen? Why? Look what it says here. It's in your notes. Galatians 5.17. Galatians 5.17. Look what it says here. The sinful nature. That's what we have, church. Anybody here don't have a sinful nature? Then that's your sinful nature. You lie. Because we all have sinful nature. That's your problem. If you don't have a sinful nature, that's your problem. The sinful nature wants to do what? Evil. Turn the person next to you. No, you're not. Taking it. <laughs> the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. The Bible says that when we surrender our life to Christ, that we have been born again. Born again means born of the Spirit of God. When Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ and said, Teacher, teacher, how can I be saved or how can I enter the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ says you have to be born of water, which is physical birth, which is in water. And you have to be born with spirit. You have to be born again. That means you have to be rejuvenated, regenerated in other words. And that spirit of God lives in you. The Bible says that we are baptized into one body by one spirit. That means that when you surrender your life to Christ, who lives in you? The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit lives in you. But again, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And we have to walk by the Spirit every single day. But also, we are still in our flesh. And the Bible says that everything that the flesh desires is opposite to what the Spirit desires. And that is when you draw the line between being led by the Spirit and still being led by your flesh. What are the things that are being led by the flesh? The things that will satisfy your physical appetite. Addiction is one of the things that the devil tries to do in us because he wants us to be enslaved. Our physical desires. Our physical satisfaction wants us to be enslaved to material things that are supposed to be free by the Spirit of God. Can I hear that? Yeah. The, the, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives what? Gives us desires that are the what? Opposite of the sinful nature. If you allow, say allow. Tell the person next to say, allow. Wow. If you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart, He will create in you desires. He will create in you desires that want to please God. Can you hear me, man? That's why if you want to get rid of your grudges, if you want to get rid of bitterness, if you want to get rid of anger, if you want to get rid of unforgiveness, and you're doing it all by yourself, you're going to fail. Why? Because it is the Holy Spirit that can give us the power to do all those things. Can I hear an amen? amen? Look what it says here. The sinful nature. These two forces. These two forces are constantly what? Fighting. So who's fighting? Not sister and sister and so. And not brother and brother and so. Who's really fighting? These two forces, our flesh and our spirit, they are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your what? Your good intention. In other words, some scholars call that the spiritual warfare. Can you hear me, man? To further on with our point of number two. Number two, now we're not looking right this down. And I love this point. Look what it says here. The real battle is never with them, meaning with people. The real battle has always been within. 
Are you with me, church? Our tendency is to fight based on what we see. Can you hear Something I don't like, something I'm not getting, something there's it. That's what I'm going to fight with. The Bible says, the fight is not in what you see. It's something that is within you. How do we know that? Look, James chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. We'll read this together. Look what it says here. Let's read this, James 4, 1. Let's read it. Ready, set, go. What is causing the quarrels and fights in the River of Faith Church? Oh, no. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Look what it says. Don't they come from the evil desires at war where? Where are all this drama coming from? It is coming from our heart, people. It has nothing to do with, with other people yet. When you allow the evil desires to overpower you, when you allow the evil desires to overcome what the Spirit wants to create in you, you're going to have a problem with other people. When you allow the evil desires to control you, the other people will just be the collateral of it. They're just going to experience it. Why? Because what you desire in your heart is what you want to get. Can you hear me, man? And if you are determined to get something that you desperately desire, you don't care who gets hurt. You don't care who, who you run over. You're going to want to get it. Can you hear me, man? And this is what James is telling us. All these fights and quarrels and drama that is happening in all of us, not only in the whole world, these issues that is going on in our nation today, it's not a political problem, people. It's a sin problem. Why? Because we all have this evil desire that is raging war within us. Let's continue reading. Look what it says there. You want what you want. Well, it's kind of redundant, of course. I'm not going to want something I already have. Sometimes the Bible just kind of gives us, you know, duh. You want what you don't have, so you what? You scheme and kill to what? To get it. Maybe for us, it's not just, of course, we're not going to go that far. But we go as far as we don't care who gets hurt. Why? Because this is what we want. And look what it says here. You are what? And let me ask this. Who, who in here is not jealous? I'm going to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Right now. <laughs> and I'm going to cast out that evil spirit in you. Oh no, I'm not jealous, Pastor. We all are. Oh, no, I'm never jealous. Come on. Turn the person next to you say, come on. We all are. Some of us just get jealous on a certain degree. Some of us are just ultimately just jealous all the time. Doesn't matter. All of us are jealous. All of us wants to get something that we do not have. So that's why every time I, I hear people say, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not jealous. No, you're being self-righteous. You don't want to admit it. Because all of us are jealous. The Bible says we all are. Look what it says here. You are jealous of what you do what others have, but you can't get it, so you what? Fight. So where does the fighting start? Not with the person. Here. You fail to deal with what's the problem here, and so you cannot help it. It will come up. Now people have insecurities. There are people that have been hurt so bad before they can't get over it. There are people that have problems with forgiving someone. There are people that have problems being mistreated. And if all of that in your heart, you fail to give it all to God, that's our issues today. Can I hear an amen? Well, Pastor, no, I don't understand why that person always talking bad about me. Well, that person first has some issues in the heart. And so are you. And so me. All of us will go through the court said, but, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't. 
Perfect Church, let me encourage you this morning with this. In some point in time, we will all need to learn to submit to God our expectations. Amen. That is the root of all our problems. Expectations. I don't know if I can say that right in different syllables. Expectations. You are mad. You are upset. You are frustrated. You are enraged because of your expectations. That's all it is. That's all it is. When you're hungry, you show up in the, in the restaurant and your, 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 your order is two seconds late. What, what do you do? You get mad because your expectation is to be in on time. When you don't like waiting and you're waiting for someone who's late, what do you do? You get mad because your expectation is you want something that you want to get. And it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And the more you have an expectation from someone and the more they do not meet that expectation, the more you will hate and the more you will rage. And all of that is all in what? In your heart. Can you hear the church? It's not about, oh, that person didn't do this to me. No, your expectation, you fail it to submit it to God. Here's one thing I understand, people. One thing I realized, God made me realize this. Only God can truly fulfill my expectations. Only God. People in some point in time will always disappoint you. Embrace it. Accept it. Well, I can't believe you let me at the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> Isn't that a song? <laughs> in some point in time, people are going to disappoint us, church. Can they hear an amen? Yes. How do we deal with this expectation? We need to submit it to God. Understanding that God, only you can really satisfy my soul. Can I hear an amen? Yes. Let's give back to God this morning. Going back to our first question this morning. Church, what is your battle plan? What is your mindset? Understanding that you are in a battle. Sometimes our battle cry is this. I don't want to be in the fight. Well, you are already if you are a believer in Christ. You are already. You are going to be attacked. That's why do I know that I'm in the fight when you get hit. And many of us here have been hit. Many of us here have been, uh, felt the attack. Many, many of us here have experienced, you know, great temptations in our life. In reality, I like to see it as a good sign that the devil is trying to stop me because he knows that God wants to accomplish something big in me. Can I hear an amen? Because the devil is not just going to stop you if he knows that there's nothing big that God has planned for you. Can I hear an amen? So don't, don't despise when you are being tempted. Don't despise when the enemy is trying to attack you. Actually be, 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 be flattered and say, Oh man, you think of me that much that you're wasting your time on me? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double up on my knees praying. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to conclude with this church. All the issues. All the issues. Say all the issues. Say all the drama, all the, drama. All the struggles, all the fights that within us, it's only one thing that will allow us to be victorious with that. You know what is it? When this two hit the ground and say, God, here's my battle cry. The name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. If you are going to keep trying to change yourself, you are going to fail. If you are trying to change your behavior, you are going to fail. If you are going to try to do it all by yourself 
by your power, by your might. Let me tell you this now. We are going to fail. Why? Go close to this. Romans 7, 18 to 25. Look what it says. And this is what I love about Paul. You know what? Because Paul is a man of God. But Paul was not sentenced to the battle. Look what it says. And I know that nothing good lives in me. You know, people that always say that I'm good, people say that I'm not a bad person, people that say that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm better than most, I'm not, I don't really hurt someone, they don't really understand who they are. Because the Bible says that all of us are sinners. There's always evil desire in our heart. The Apostle Paul says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want, and how many of you can say amen to this? Just listen to this very carefully. And we got close with this. I want to do what is right, but I can't. And then it goes on, and I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't do what, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I end up doing it anyway. That tells me that this person is battling within. Remember the first verse that I showed you, Galatians 5, that says, Do not the spirit and the sinful nature are constantly fighting? This is what is happening in our lives today, church. This is the constant battle of whether am I going to follow what my flesh wants, am I going to follow what God wants. And look what it says in verse, in verse 19, or verse 20. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that what? That does it. Because the spirit cannot lead you to sin. Only our flesh can lead us to sin. So when we fall into sin, that's exactly our flesh. How do you know that you make the wrong decision in your life? You follow your flesh. Because the spirit cannot produce that is not according to the spirit. Are you with me? In other words, apple tree cannot produce oranges or guayabano or guava or whatever. Can you hear me, man? So if you follow your sinful nature, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be consequences. And here's the plan of the devil, people. Sin now, you can pay later. That's his plan. Just sin now, live your life now, and the consequences, I'll just bill you. That's not real freedom. Jesus Christ says the Son came to set you free, and you are free indeed. So what should we what, what should we do? Look what Paul says. Verse 21. I have discovered this principle of life. Listen to this very carefully, church, because it will change your life if you get this. I've discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right. I inevitably do what is wrong. Every time that you want to be closer to God, every time that you want to do something for God, every time that you hear a genuine calling, a divine encounter with God, there's going to be opposition. There's going to be opposition. Every time that God wants to do something and every time that God wants to accomplish something great in your life and I believe that all of us here God is calling. And I believe that all of us here God is calling us for something greater than ever in ourselves that we ever can think of. And every time you go through that and you hear that calling, you can trust that there is going to be an opposition. How do we deal with that? Last one, close with this. Look what it says. Verse 22. I love God, flow in all my heart. Let's continue reading. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me slave to the sin that is still within me. And lastly, verse 24. What a miserable person I am. I want, to, I want us to get this church. And I promise we'll close with this. I keep saying that. But here's one thing. You gotta come to the point in your life. 
Because, let me say this real quick. People say mothers know best. Your best friend knows you best. People you love knows you best. Your husband, your wife probably knows you best. But here's one thing that I can tell you. No one knows you more than anyone than yourself. You cannot fool yourself. You cannot fool yourself. No one knows you than anyone than yourself. You know who you are. You know your tendencies. You know your weaknesses. You know all your secrets. You know everything. How wicked your heart is. The Bible says that our heart is wicked and desperately, de deceitful and desperately wicked. Here's the thing, church. We have to come to a point in our lives that we have to ask this question. Who will free me from all of this? I want you to think about that question. Who will free me from all of this? Because just like what I said, you cannot change your own attitude. You can try. You can make progress. But the change that God can do in your life, only Him can do it. Can I hear you, man? We have to come to a point in our lives that we have to ask ourselves this question. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? and death and my close with this i say that i'm gonna say that 10 times before i actually do it your answer to that question will change everything some people they say oh you know if i found the right person if i found, found a, a wife that wife is gonna change me you're right or if i find this you know if i find you know my lost father finally will complete me who will free me from all of this? There are people in your life that's going to be influential in your change. But church, nothing can change you the way Jesus can. So let this be our battle cry this morning as we start this series. Just as Paul says, thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. We got to pray together. I want you to turn the person next to you. Hold that hand. Remind that person we are an army. We are an army. We say we wear the same uniform. Church. We have our differences. We have things that we might not agree all the time. But let me remind you. We are not each other's enemy. We have a Savior that wins the battle for us. We need to be dependent on Him. Can I hear you, man? Let's pray together. Father, hand in hand, Lord, we are declaring this morning, Lord God, that we are part of your army. Hand in hand, Lord God, we are declaring, Lord God, that we cannot fight this battle on our own. Hand in hand, Lord God, this morning we want to declare, Lord God, that we are in a battle. That we are in a war. But that war is not against flesh and blood. That war is not against the person next to me. That war is not the person at my work. That war is not the person at my home. That war is not against the person at church. That war is not against the person outside. That war is not against the person anywhere I go. That war that is raging is within me. And Lord Jesus, this morning, I just want to acknowledge you. Change our heart, Lord. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. You see how miserable we are. And we know that only you has truly the power to free us from all of this, God. And so our prayer this morning, let this be a, our battle cry. That in the name of Jesus Christ we will stand and we will trust alone in the name 
on Jesus Christ, I will put my trust alone. May that be our battle cry this morning. Continue to change our hearts, God. We cannot win this battle on our own. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's give it a thought out this morning.